Well, hello again everyone. I'm back out in the garage and I've been asked to do an airbrush picture of a dragon. Now I've made up some more steel blanks to use. I'm going to use a landscape orientation for this one. I've primed it and put a base coat on using that mini spray gun that I've got now. And this is in fact the citron paint that we used for the bonnet refurbishment project. But anyway, it's got a little bit of texture to it. So I'm going to begin just by flattening this base coat down with some of the wet and dry paper. Well, I've got a nice reference to work to, and I think the first thing I'll do is I'm just going to cut out so I can put the background in and get a reasonably crisp edge here. I'll probably do these bits here as well, though they are more blurred. So let's go ahead and do that. Right, well, the next thing is going to be to put this sort of dark sky background in. And uh, when you look at it, it's more sort of dark bluey sort of purpley kind of colours so um, I'm going to do the darkest bits first I may uh, even go in in some of them with uh, a very dark grey to start off with but I think that's what I will do and uh, we'll take it from there Right, now I'm going to take that off and just slip the graphite paper underneath and just go over the key bits and pieces with a cocktail stick just so we can uh, get everything in roughly the right place. We don't need to match it exactly because it is just a reference. Um, but uh, we'll try and uh, locate things a little bit. I was going to leave this piece on as a shield, but uh, I've been looking at it and thinking about it, and I think I might take that off and start adding in the detail freehand initially, because I think that may even be easier, really. Well, it's uh, time to pack up and go and get some dinner now. But uh, yeah, I think uh, when I get back on this tomorrow, we'll uh, maybe start adding some brown tones to those dark areas. Or maybe we'll do the mouth. don't know really. Yeah, I might do the mouth next. Who knows? We'll see what uh, tomorrow brings. Well, we've come back out to the garage. It's a little bit cooler out here today. It's feeling a little bit autumnal, but... Uh, me and Mr Ginger come out to carry on with this airbrush dragon. 
And I think rather than uh, start on the mouth and stuff, I think we're going to mix up more of a brownie colour to give a little bit more colour to his wings to distinguish him a bit more from the sky. Right, I think the next thing I'm going to do is uh, come in with, well, I don't know really, come in with some orange, I think, and start to bring in a little bit of the glow from the fire. Right, well, I think the next thing I'm going to do, the whole thing does need to be a little bit darker, doesn't it? But the next thing I'm going to do is put some white in and just pick up some of the highlights so I don't lose them completely when I darken it up. Or should I darken it up? I don't know. Maybe I'll darken it. I'm going to darken it up first. Yeah. Yeah, let's darken it up. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing really, do I? Let's darken it up first. See what happens. Right, now I think it's time to prop in the teeth and I think I'm going to make my life a little bit easier by cutting them out of a bit of acetate. So I think uh, we're nearly ready to add the flames in, but what I want to do is give it a coat of clear first, not not the uh, the clear coat, but uh, I'm going to try some of the intercoat clear again and see um, if that helps protect it while I'm doing the uh, the solvent based candies and stuff with the flames. That's uh, that's the theory anyway. The last time I bought some Interco Clear, it went absolutely solid in the bottle as soon uh, as I opened it. So uh, let's uh, hope that doesn't happen with this stuff because this is the wicked stuff and uh, it's quite expensive. So uh, it would be not a good thing if the whole bottle went solid again. So uh, make sure I've sealed it up nice and tight when I've finished with it. Right, well now is I think a good time to go and have some lunch while that clear coat cures and then we can come back out and start the flames perhaps. Right, well I've had my lunch, very nice it was too. And now I'm going to start the flames. I think what I'm going to do, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to use some solvent red and just put really really faint on just to give that sort of back dark glow to the fire. I don't know if fire isn't dark but it's like a faint glow, faint ready readiness. Right now I'm going to go in with some white to get the flame pan and I'm going to try and cover that then with some orange. And I'm going to make the orange just by mixing the red and yellow candy. I'm not going to use 
any of the solvent colours because I think that's too strong. This is really quite a hot fire. There's not a great deal of red in it, it's all mainly yellow. Well, I'm starting to have some problems with the airbrush. It's not been thoroughly cleaned for quite a while, so I'm going to strip it down and leave it to soak in some cleaning fluid while I go and fetch young Mia from school because I'm picking her up from school today, first day back at school after the summer holidays and all the coronavirus stuff. So, uh, yeah, that's quite a thing. Anyway, I'm not sure whether I'll get back onto this tonight, but it uh, be no bad thing for those parts to have a good old soak. There's a selection of my airbrush paintings available on my Etsy shop. Just go to TTXELA Airbrush in Etsy. I'll put a link in the description below. Well, it's Monday evening now and we're back on this. I've reassembled the airbrush, cleaned it all out and it is running free again now. A bit of a panic when I was clearing it out. I dropped the little tiny nozzle and I couldn't find it anywhere. I eventually found it stuck in the veins of my big compressor there so <laughs> that was a narrow escape I thought I might have to order another one anyway I've decided mixing those candies together didn't quite work so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over again with another flame pattern in white and uh, what we'll do is we'll mix up some solvent orange and go over that I think we're pretty much there. You might have noticed I had some problems with my airbrush and I had to swap back over to the cheap eBay airbrush. So uh, that was a bit disappointing. I think it just needs a really thorough clean. But uh, anyway, I think that is probably as good as I'm going to get that. So I'm going to take that indoors now. That can dry and harden up. And then we're going to have to... Uh, Give it the old clear coat. Well, some time later and we're back onto this. Uh, it's actually the following weekend. I'm going to give it the clear coat. I've also got uh, this butterfly to give a coat of clear. Nikki bought this from the garden centre, but it's um, apparently not good for outdoor display unless you lacquer it why you'd sell something in a garden centre that you can't buy outside, I, I don't know. But uh, anyway, we'll give that a coat of lacquer as well. So I've made some notes from everyone's comments after last time when I had the problem. We're going to wait five minutes after the initial uh, tack coat and then six to seven minutes after the wet coat. So we're apparently waiting too long. It's got to still be tacky and not dry when we put the next coat on. We're going to limit it to about 30 psi and try and do a 60% over that. We're going to be a lot closer 
and moving a lot faster apparently was the advice too far away before uh, we need to be a lot closer and move faster so I'm going to mix up some lacquer I'll run some thinners through the gun I've actually cleaned up the gun in the ultrasonic bath since last time because it was getting a bit gummed up so that's had a thorough clean so there might be a little bit of uh, water and airbrush cleaner in there so definitely need to flush that through with some thinners and uh, yeah we'll see how we get on i'll leave the camera running in real time for applying the clear coat so uh, it'll be easier for you to see what i'm doing wrong if indeed i am doing anything wrong Well now of course got to wait quite a bit longer for that to dry so I can turn them over and paint the other side. So now is the ideal time to stop and have some buttered fruit bread. Hmm. Well that is looking a lot better. It's got uh, some lumps and bumps in it. I think this is mainly weld spatter so hopefully we won't get that on the front. I'm not sure what this lump is. This lump is rather bigger. <laughs> don't know anyway at least it's on the back and of course the the butterfly is uh, okay as well i think it might need a few more minutes to dry before we can turn them over right well while that is drying i'm going to mix up some more clear coat because uh, we haven't got enough left to do what we did again and uh, learn from experience you don't particularly want to be running out in the middle of it Well, I'm thinking that's a little bit better than my previous attempt, so I'm quite pleased with it. I don't know, a bit of progress, I think. Anyway. Right, well, I'm going to pack away now. We've got somewhere to go this afternoon. 
and uh, that will have a good 24 hours to harden up. Well, I've been discussing this with Mr Ginge and we think we're going to leave this in the gun finish. We're not going to uh, try and rub it down and cut and buff it. We think this is actually a pretty nice finish for this picture as it is. So uh, yeah, this is the finished product. Let's hope the lady who asked for it likes it, eh? all for now if you enjoyed it press like subscribe if you want to see some more and ring the bell to be notified when we upload something new